I think we're actually early. I know. <laughs> Are we a minute early? <laughs> we're going to surprise people. Hello, we're early. <laughs> there'll be people that I have don't join the live until like eight o'clock, and they'll be like, "What?" People turn it's up at about five going. past usually, it's don't they? Going. Hello, everybody. Happy Sunday. Hello. Uh, welcome to the live stream. Uh, if you are new to this, um, and there may be a lot of new people because um, the channel's gone pretty bonkers during this whole eBay saga and the videos we put out recently. So welcome if you're new to this. Uh, we go live every Sunday at eight. Um, quite often we share pickups. Um, sometimes we just chat. This is just going to be a chat talking about some of the issues that have come up. And we're going to talk over some points, some of which that have come up in the comments on the recent videos about eBay holding our money and what we went through. Um, loosely, we're going to talk about how we feel about eBay. Um, loosely. I think it will be interesting. <laughs> um, so hello, we are live. If you're watching live, you can say hello. Let's do a couple of hellos whilst people come in. Why do I feel like the, it's very far away? Does it? I can, I can <laughs> move it forwards. Far away. <laughs> Zoom in. People will be struggling to hear us. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> uh, hello, Manus Market, Emily, Rosie, Leanne. Good to see you. Hello, Maria. Uh, things are fine. Hopefully you've seen the videos. Uh, we, we have had a resolution. We are trading on eBay back to normal. We've now had two follow-up calls. We have had the follow-up call with um, eBay's eBay UK's general manager. Yeah, brand new to the role actually tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> um, we, what a way we, to start. <laughs> we spoke to him on the Friday, his last day in his previous role. Uh, eBay's general manager, I can't remember her name, has gone on maternity. So we spoke to the brand new general manager of eBay and we had a really long conversation. We're not going to talk about that because we are doing a follow up video to share what he said. Um, but yes, welcome, Maria, Elaine. Uh, pleased to hear you're sorted out with eBay. Yes, thank you. It was unnecessary, in our opinion, and we, we've we've voiced that opinion. <laughs> um, Rosie, hello. Pete, good to see you. Hello, Gary. Hello, Dave is in. Good to see you. Lots of people saying hello. AC Global reselling. Ah, locals are in. Hi, Porkies. Um, right, we won't say hi to everyone. We'll be here all night doing that. Mark is with us. Once love treasures. Fluffy muffin. Let's try and scroll down. Oh, look, married to reselling. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, Jason, Chris. Oh, you're, you're really milking this eBay issue, aren't you? Well, well, the channel is fundamentally about eBay. eBay is how we earn a living. Most people that follow the channel... Our resellers of some sort most use eBay. So it's kind of what the channel's about. So, yes, we are talking about the issue. Um, milking it? Sure, if that's what you want to say. Um, oh, Sharon. Sharon, I think I saw. No, maybe not. Oh, Derek's in. Hey, Derek. Right, I'm going to scroll to the end. Oh. <laughs> Don't think they're milking it, just telling people. Telling and then to inform people of the problem of eBay. Well, exactly. I mean, it's, kind of it's it. what's going on in our lives at the moment. So that's what we do. We share our life. <laughs> that's what's happening in our life right now. So, yeah. Ah, look. Lovely meeting you both <laughs> yesterday. Nearly met Jeff too. Uh, have we not left the RSPCA shop when we did? Yes. That was a I thought that was going to be huge, that RSPCA. It was tiny. Yeah, you could barely move that? in there. Um, yeah, if we met, if you're watching and we and we bumped into you on today, lovely to meet you. We spoke to a number of people at the charity warehouse event. Right, I'm going to scroll to the end. Sorry if I've missed your comments. Um, oh, someone. Hi, Emma. Not new, but a new eBay reseller. And your experience is quite frankly terrifying. Hmm. Yes, we would agree. Hello from Poland. Hello, hello to Poland. Hello, hello. Right, I'm trying to get to the end, then we'll, we'll crack on. We've got a couple of thank yous, and then we're going to share oh, our thoughts. Noticed a few people are saying hello, I'm new. So hello if you're new to this channel. Um, welcome, and thank you for joining us. 
Absolutely, yeah. If you're new subs, we do this every Sunday. Uh, it's usually quite an informal affair. Um, oh, hello, Heather. <laughs> it's Heather, isn't it? Excellent. It's, it's zooming past, but I'm noticing. I'm trying to get to the end. <laughs> Gadget man. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. Sean. Hello, Sean and Andrea, because I'm sure Andrea's probably. Nia. Well. And Mini Monty. We have a new Monty. <laughs> it's Monty. Not a Monty. I said Monty. How did I get Monty? <laughs> Jeffrey. Um, I don't know if Cliff is watching. A uh, good friend of ours, Cliff, sent this over to cheer us up. Um, and there's some funny pictures, actually, that you shared. Yeah. I think Jeff shared one on his Instagram. Did he? It was clever of him. Um, it's really made us laugh, so thank you. And Jeff was didn't know quite what to do with it, did he? No, he didn't know what to make of it. It's a Build-A-Bear one. It is a Build-A-Bear. Quite cool. So we, so we have mini Jeff now. Yeah. And then you were very kindly gifted. Yeah, well, um, lovely Sue, I don't know if you're watching, um, has purchased the cheek bowl from us and um, then sent me these. Look at these. If you follow me on Instagram, I've already shared these, but they're Hornsey, the heirloom pattern, I believe. I've always wanted a Hornsey mug. And literally, I opened the box, not knowing what to expect. Sue said she'd sent me something. And I was like... There was mugs. A, that was my face. I was like, oh my God, these are so cool. So our mug in so, mug um, out ratio has been messed up. Right? It's meant to be <laughs> one mug in, one mug out. So yeah, it's I gone was out the window. absolutely over the moon with those. They're absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. I love Hornsey. So yes, that was that really made my day and actually made my week as well, I think. <laughs> After everything. That we've you know had yes. to deal with this week and last and so was it sarah did you say sorry sue, sue. Yes. i get so muddled up thank you sue <laughs> and thank you uh it's cliff and sarah though isn't it yes so yes yes i noticed we've got a oh wow super chat from gary gary clark so glad you finally you're fin finally getting back to some sort of normality ebay's customer service for sellers is so bad i've had issues in the past and that's part of the reason why I stopped selling. That's it's just so sad to hear that that you know that's what caused you to stop selling. We in our conversations that we've had since with eBay and but thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much for the super really chat. Appreciate that. That's so generous. In our conversations and the one we had with uh, eBay's general manager on Friday, we were trying so hard to impress on them because we feel they don't know that your people like yourself are leaving the platform be directly because of their poor customer service. And we share, we've shared with you, we shared with him that the experience the other week made us question our whole business. Really did. It really did. And sadly, it's not the first time that eBay's actions have had that effect on us. And it happens all the time. And people who aren't quite as committed as we feel to eBay and as loyal as we feel to eBay, and we're going to talk about why we feel loyal to eBay in a bit, would have walked a long time ago. This is what we think they are not appreciating. Um, yeah, I just noticed in this comment here from Joni saying, I've left my eBay subscription after 10 years because of the customer service. I'm, I'm gonna screen grab that comment. I'm collecting this stuff up to share with them because they need to open their eyes. Um, and sadly, what you're saying, Joni, is not unusual. I'll screen grab that. Um, so how do I get that? I was looking through the comments on the, the video where we shared that phone call and then the video we followed up about customer services follow-up call. Um, and a lot of comments were predictably very cynical about eBay's response. They're just paying you lip service. They're just telling you what you want to hear. Why are you even talking to them? Why are you listening? I left eBay years ago, they're useless, those sort of comments. And I'm not surprised we had those. And I understand people feeling cynical. Um, I feel we have a chance to talk to them. We have a chance to tell them our, how bad our experience was and share other people's. Whether they're going to listen or not, we can't control. But I would rather try and put something across then do nothing and just carry on as if nothing happened, right? What are the alternatives here? Don't talk to them and just moan about them here like this 
or set up some lines of communication and, and try and get our point across. And that's what we're trying really hard to do. Um, but yeah, so many people commenting, what a waste of time. They're just telling you what you want to hear, paying lip service. And it's not that we're daft. You know, we don't expect anything to change overnight at eBay. We're not even that hopeful, sadly, that anything will change on the back of our tiny influence. But why not try, right? And why, yeah. is that how you feel? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, we've been on the platform for, you know, as <laughs> they keep telling us every time we find up, 22 years now. And yeah, everything that you just said. And we've built a life, a lifestyle, a business, and it all centers around eBay. And yeah. we want it to continue really we we still think that ebay is the best platform for us you know and yeah so of course you know i just i made this point before we haven't written this down at all in, in notes we haven't discussed this but i made this point during this whole ordeal that and you know in in relation to the comments that we've had and we live in this cancel culture these days. It's like if somebody makes a mistake, that's it, done, you know, whatever, just end of, walk away. You know, there's no discussion. There's no chance for someone to learn from that or no chance for growth. And and I think that actually here we have an opportunity for growth. We have an opportunity for communication, which is sadly the thing that's lacking with ebay yes um but we have an opportunity with us um you know to share comments and to to talk to ebay and to an opportunity for growth and learning and improvement yeah and that goes against this council culture that we live in these days you know i think that we we need we need to give each other more space there, there was a I think you're right. And there was a very strong feeling in the comments section of just, just, this is a waste of time even talking to them. eBay don't care about their sellers. You're wasting your breath. But we have an opportunity and it may just be lip service, but what we've heard back is they are seeing this as an opportunity to improve. I and mean, we're not going to go into detail about what was said in the chat with the general manager of eBay, but it was positive. And it's not the end of it. This is going to be a conversation moving forwards. Um, so uh, are you going to read comment, something? Yeah, a comment there from the swimming bear. Um, sorry, I've lost it. Hang on. Um, eBay is a fantastic platform, but as a seller, you need to have confidence in your security, building a business that uses the platform. If you don't have that, of course, you look elsewhere. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. That's yeah. so well put. And I'm going to screen grab that. <laughs> um, it's sometimes very, I find it very hard to articulate what I'm trying to say. But yes, that is something we've also tried to impress that. And quick, if I want to talk about why we stay loyal, and we, we've said to people, anyone that will listen to eBay, that this isn't the first time this has happened to us, sadly. This isn't the worst eBay has treated us. And the stuff we've not shared publicly on YouTube that eBay has done to us in the past we've mm. shared some of the stuff yeah, yeah and we chose to share this or ordeal because i was so desperate to get some attention on it if i'm perfectly honest but we are loyal to ebay for a couple of reasons a ebay changed our life ebay gave us an alternative to the nine to five we were both desperate to get out of the jobs we were in we were both unhappy and ebay was that exit for us and it has remained an incredibly important part of our life ever since. Mm. I wouldn't, I just want to interject. I wouldn't say I was unhappy, but because I just had a baby, I didn't really want yeah. to go back to work. So it gave me an opportunity to work for myself and to build a business so that we could you know, improve our lifestyle. Yeah. But, and it's a huge but, we, loyalty only goes so far. And we were pushed to the edge with this, where I was very close to be just throwing all my toys out of the pram and storming off as many people in the comments said i left ebay because of this exact thing i left ebay because of terrible service blah 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 
but we are we do tend to be really resilient and we we try and try to make things work we are i think we are <sighs> yeah i mean i think that's probably one of my biggest strengths you know I, I don't generally talk about things like that because i don't like to blow my own trumpet in any kind of way but i you know if i ha had to say what my strengths were I'd say resilience and that's because of things that i've been through in my life and it taught me that so yeah you know some and sometimes i'm naively resilient and far too optimistic about things <laughs> so. exactly and that is there is a strong feeling of that in in the comments section that we are naive and we're just listening to them peddling the same story yeah I, maybe I, they are i do like to and that's probably one of my weaknesses i do tend to give people the benefit of the doubt and yeah. and, and i like to believe what people are telling me uh, you know, <laughs> and it, it does ring in my head that we have been here before. We have had apologies before. We've had very similar phone calls before, and I'm not sure anything changed. This is a very different scenario to the other issues we've had, but I, I don't know that anything did change last time. Um, we wanted to talk about. So, there's a good comment here. Yeah, let's read some chat. Um, eBay is an incredible platform. The problem is that it's run very poorly from a customer fronting experience. eBay being a monopoly is never a good thing as arrogance creeps in. Or yeah. complacency probably more than arrogance, I would say, because if you, you know, you're at the top and you think, you know, we're, we're going to keep customers anyway or we're going to get new ones anyway because we're, you know, the, the biggest, you know, have the biggest marketplace out there then the, it does become complacency, doesn't it? Definitely. Definitely. I think that's maybe part of the problem, that complacency and being unaware, being naive to how damaging this all is. Um, and another reason we, if, if you want to say that our loyalty, maybe our misguided loyalty with eBay is we still think it's the best platform. Did you want to for the way, that? For the way, um, yeah, well, for the way we choose to do our business, we're a very generalist seller. We see opportunities here, there, and everywhere. We buy all sorts of stuff. You've seen the sort of stuff we pick up. For us, it's the best place to sell that. You know, a generalist everything seller. And we've tried most of the platforms, and we still think it's the best one. However, their customer service is appalling. And I don't say that lightly. It's appalling for a company of that size and stature to, to get things so wrong so regularly is shocking. And this is how we've been saying it in these phone calls. And we're not holding back on it. Again, whether it makes any difference whatsoever, we don't know. Um, I wanted to talk about alternatives, because that's the other reason why we stick with eBay is that we don't feel... I can't do the screenshot on your computer. And I know... I'm just going to grab that. We know many people are... Um, well, the phrase having your eggs in one basket has come up a lot in the comments and we've said it ourselves. And we've said that to eBay, that people these days more and more so are actively looking for alternatives to take their reselling business. Um, we don't think for the way we choose to do our business, there is a viable op op uh, alternative yet. Vinted is going the route of allowing professional, as in business sellers, to sell on their platform. So perhaps Vinted could grow into an alternative. I don't think it is there yet. There's whatnot, and there's a big discussion going on about whatnot and how viable that is. Is that a, a bubble that's going to burst? Is it, is it going to go in the way of, um, what's the other one, Poshmark? Um, married to reselling, they, they've been sharing some really interesting thoughts on whatnot. Hmm. I still think eBay is, I mean, there's Amazon. That's a whole other story. We we left Amazon and we can't see us going back. And we left Amazon for similar but different reasons to the to eBay's customer service debacle. Um, the main reason we left Amazon was complete lack of control of, over our business. That's how we felt. Um, we felt like an employee. Um, and there were other things going on. The, the returns situation with Amazon. There's a lot going on, but we we left Amazon, so that's 
for us, not an alternative now. We don't want to go back. No. I'm just reading James's comment now. I remember meeting Andrea on YouTube. She seemed a little stern, Ooh. but meeting her in real life, she seemed to be a really sweet person. Am I do I come across as stern? Well, there you go. Well, that's news to me. I didn't, <laughs> didn't realize I came across as stern. Sorry if I do, I'm not. Uh, Fluffy Muffin, now, what's that one there? This one. Yeah. Uh, some sellers have no choice. Their account's deleted by eBay, no chance to communicate or try to make things right. The account is gone. Then what do people do? Yeah. And we've talked about this as well with them and shared some stories we've heard. And, yeah, there's. I, I don't know that they, they're going to talk to us about individual cases. I don't think they can. But what we've tried to say is that those stories get shared now we're in the information sharing age you know our video has been viewed by 70 odd thousand people now that's terrible pr stories like that about people's accounts properly getting switched off get shared instantly all around the world so it's not like it used to be in the early days where where nobody was really talking about ebay or sharing how we do business or the or the horror stories that go on so eBay, their level of customer service incompetence and their heavy handedness, is that a word maybe, with um, their sellers gets shared and it puts the fear of God into people. And that's another thing that's so prevalent in our comments recently, the comment sections. It reads like people that are that can't stand eBay and have left already, people that are now terrified that they're their business is at risk, people that want to sell on eBay but are now worried about it and are actively seeking other alternatives. Mm -hmm. This is what the comment section are full of, and this is this is what we want them to read. If if they're not going to communicate with us long term, just, just read the comments on not only our YouTube videos but others because that gives you a snapshot into the, the, the feeling, the general feeling within the community, better than we can articulate it ourselves. Um, what else did we have down here? Um, we've kind of covered most of that already. Um, we've been told by the on the two follow up calls we've had how valuable we are, right? How eBay values our custom and us as sellers. Um, we've been told that small businesses are eBay's prior one of eBay's priorities. And we've said to them, show us that then. Actions are what we want, right? Because that is not translating. What we are told, how eBay feel about small businesses, what we are told is not translating to us and the people we talk to, to, to you guys, the people that are commenting on our videos, that is not translation. That's not what, how people feel. We don't feel seen. We don't feel respected. We don't feel valued. Mm -hmm. So there's a massive disconnect there. Yeah. And if we can only do one thing with our tiny little you know, influence on this is to open eBay's eyes that we do not feel valued. We feel like our businesses are fragile. And we feel paranoid. We were watching Shelley Shelstaruni talk about well, how does she put it? eBay anxiety. I think that was so accurately put, Shelley, that being an eBay business seller now in 2024 is an anxiety-ridden thing because of everything that gets shared. Our experience has been shared, others are shared. And we don't feel safe. And we've been trying to get that across because, as I said, they told us we value you you so much and all of our small business sellers and we were like well show us that spend some money fixing your appalling customer service rather than spending millions on advertising try and keep us on board try and keep everyone in the chat on board yeah um lisa's got a good comment here i love ebay i'm just scared if anything goes wrong i will lose my account and i don't have um many contacts any, any. or any contacts so would never get it back so yeah she's scared about losing the account yeah that's un yeah completely understandable and it's it's a real thing and this this is what we are we're 
we're going to get across to them as, as we carry on with our conversation. Um, yeah, it's it's no way to do to run a business, is it? To feel so vulnerable. That's the word. That's how we yeah. that's how we felt for those whole two weeks, because what should have been a simple thing, verify your business. Well, we have a business. We have all of our paperwork. We have nothing. We have nothing to fear was how we felt at the beginning of the two weeks. Two weeks in when we'd sent them everything they'd asked for and none of it was enough. We felt so vulnerable. We're really? like, what, we what? Yeah, we said to them, we felt really fearful. We felt scared. Yeah. What what happens um, next? Because we were saying to them on the phone, we can't provide anything else. We can't, we've got nothing more to give you. So when the next lot's rejected, which we were expecting, what do we do next? And the, and the customer service reps who, having had the conversations we've had, the customer service reps were incapable of solving our problem for us. They don't have the power. They don't have the, the knowledge. They don't have the knowledge. And, uh, the communication within departments is limited. Non-existent, <laughs> Phil. It's crazy. I just want to yeah. highlight this from Elaine because I I, <laughs> I had that running around in my head. I think somebody up further up said they don't care about us, and I was just singing that to myself. And then you put that in. And, uh, yeah, who knew? To, who knew back in whenever that. it was ninety five, ninety six? Michael was singing about eBay. <laughs> who knew? Oh dear. And then I just wanted. To, there's another comment here that I wanted to highlight. Hang on, hang on. What was that? Steve Jones says, "Please stop moaning, FF, FFS." Well, um, we are not moaning, Steve. We're just having a conversation about what's happened, and I think that it's an important conversation to have within the community because if we can get some feedback and you know direct feedback that we can then pass on as well. The, then it's good but also i think we all feel the same and it, you have to talk about these things you do you absolutely have to talk about these things yeah because it's our livelihood you know so ha discussing things and how things can be improved is not moaning it's not moaning and and if and if this is is um not for you just don't watch it you know i'm i'm sorry if if this is too much moaning the thing is, we, we are trying very hard to turn what was, uh, yeah, a difficult situation. We're trying to drag something positive out of it. Mm. We have a chance, we've been given a chance to communicate at the highest level with eBay with an ongoing conversation, right? So we're not just moaning in the corner, not being proactive. We're trying to turn this whole debacle into something positive, not just for us we've had our issue solved we want to improve ebay we said to both of the people we've spoken to that perhaps naively we are still loyal to ebay and we still love ebay and we want to do anything we can to improve it so i think it's the opposite of moaning i think this is being positive trying to be positive yeah um, yeah good point gary without discussion we don't improve what needs improving. Yeah. 100%. And as we said at the start, this channel was was set up to share our dealings uh, as resellers. Most of that's done on eBay. So anything and anything that we encounter is going to be shared on the channel. So that is kind of how it is, right? <sighs> yeah. So... Okay. Right. Did you have anything more to say? Or I think what we wanted to talk about actually was then moving on uh, and talking about what you think um, are are there any other viable alternatives to eBay? Yes. Um, not that you know to run a full full time reselling business. I mean, we're generalist, but. We just want to try to open up a discussion with you guys and get your thoughts on, um, you know, if you know if the worst came to the worst, what what are the viable alternatives? Yeah, and put in the chat what as far as platforms or ways of reselling a reselling business, put what you think is an alternative, or are there any alternatives to using eBay? 
Um, and also, so many comments saying to us, you need to have other options, you need to diversify, you need to, we've been actively doing that and putting things in place for two or three years now. So we're not ridiculously naive, we're not loyal to the point where eBay is everything, it never has been actually. Um, but we want to continue selling on eBay, we want it to be better. But in your opinion, is there an alternative? What do you use an alternative as an alternative? If you've left eBay, what are you doing now? Um, if you are thinking of scaling back your eBay, and I've seen that so many times in comments on other videos and in our comments section, where are you taking that business? Is it Etsy? Is it Vinted? Is it, where is it? Is it face-to-face? -face, is it marketplace, right? Facebook? So I dig vintage said I'm full time on Etsy with a small eBay to get rid of old stock. Now, we know that stall 69 is um, pretty much full time on Etsy as well. And throughout this whole debacle, I mean, I have I do cross list onto Etsy, but it really made me think about concentrating more on that. I have to say through all of this. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I still haven't started putting my vintage stuff. When I say my no, stuff, I know. the stuff You've I do. I've talked about this for a couple of years now. The, the thing is, eBay eBay does so well for the stuff I sell. Mm -hmm. I probably should try Etsy out because I I, I think Derek does quite well on Etsy yeah. and gets higher prices. And just and, going on what you just said there, Tommy says, I don't think there is. eBay is too big. And that's kind of what you're saying, that for what you sell, that's, you know, eBay is the right place for it. High Street is is an interesting one. If, if you haven't followed our channel before, I don't recognize the name, she may not. We, our background is High Street. Um, well, and, we started on eBay, mm -hmm. then if, we went into the High Street. Before that, we were both in retail. And um, we did both, because we did eBay and Amazon, um, you know, in the background as well. So we sold online and in the shop. Um, and then we gave that up for lifestyle choices and went back on to online only um and we don't want to go back to a high street shop we tried to and it didn't work out yep um and uh -oh. i just yeah it, high street struggles these days anyway it's had there's a whole other story but the, we, <laughs> for, the, we for the ties you know we, we don't want to be tied to a high street shop anymore and yeah we we had a high street outlet for best part of a decade and that was really successful for us I can't see us going back to High Street. With a High Street shop, it's a huge investment up front. And then exactly what Andrew was saying, you are you are tied to either you or paying someone to be in there nine to five or whatever your opening hours are. Um, so you lose the freedoms that, that we have working from home. Uh, and the reason we work from home, a big part of it is the freedom of it. Yeah. So high street isn't an option for us anymore. Never say never, but I don't think we're going to take that route. Yeah, and Will says go back to go back work. to work. Well, we haven't worked for. Well, well we haven't worked. <laughs> we, We've worked blooming hard. We do nothing. <laughs> we probably worked three, three, four times harder than yeah. we ever did in another job. Um, but we haven't worked for someone else um, since well, for over 22 years now, because yeah. but El Ellen was born 2001. I went, yeah, so it's about 22 years for me. I gave up my job while I was pregnant. But when Will, Will leave, never went back. <laughs> Will is right that that's always an alternative. Um, it's not something we would choose to go back to work I, I feel a little bit unemployable these days well there is that <laughs> my attitude to other people <laughs> telling me what to do wouldn't go down well but also I, I just really I just would not want to work for someone else now whatever I did you know I, I would want to have my own business I wouldn't want to work for someone else yes and like I said what we we have been actively pursuing and um, working out plans to have other business interests anyway for the last couple of years um building up our youtube to a point where it's a significant income all of those things we, we've it's not like we've been asleep burying our heads in the sand and just thinking ebay is our life until we die that's never been how we've thought at the same time we are loyal as resellers to the ebay platform in that we don't want to drop it 
because of a bad experience. Um, we want to help improve it to get better. That's kind of what we're trying to get across in this video. But Michelle there is saying Etsy. And I think we do need to push our Etsy store. Yeah. Um, perhaps it's something I actually need to pursue as well, because mm -hmm. Andrea deals with Etsy. I've never listed on Etsy. We sell a fair amount on there, but I, I don't have a clue. You deal with all of that, right? You package um, it. <laughs> I package it, yeah. Uh, hi, Lisa. There are other good platforms, but not uh, would bring you enough money like eBay. Yeah, that's kind of how we feel that currently in the UK, I don't know that there is a, a better alternative to eBay yet. Uh, Husties, hi. Vinted Pro, possibly, but there's going to be so many teething problems, I think. Yeah. And you hear nightmare stories about vintage customer service yeah. as well, to be honest with you. Can I just say... Um, Vinted going the route of having business sellers on there, they will now have to comply to distant selling regulations. And all of the issues that the, the common issues that come up with selling distance, person to person selling, will come up on Vinted. There is no secret or, or way around a lot of the issues because distance selling is based on trust. I made a video a few years ago about the problem eBay will never solve. And that could have been the problem any platform will never solve solve is that distance selling is based on trust right trust that i am actually selling a white fluffy dog as i've shown in the pictures i'm actually putting that in a box and sending it ebay never see it they don't know don't sell it Clint might be very happy. it's an example <laughs> right this pen then and it, then there's the trust that the the uh receiver of it is being honest that it's broken that it's actually turned up you know, it's trust on both sides. And eBay doesn't know who, who's telling the truth and who's not. Vinted won't know. All of the issues around that will happen on Vinted. Other people have said, we need to club together and start a new alternative. <sighs> Good luck with that. Good luck with that. <laughs> One word, eBay gum. <laughs> One word, eBay gum. There we go. I mean, you know, I think they're doing well They've in terms of they're really still pushing what they're doing and um they've launched an app and but it's a slog you know whoever is you know designed this and running it and it's they're not gaining traction yet and it's been out for years so yes it's they it's, could tell you how difficult it is to it's do that. not an easy one um gary miller says loot is that the newspaper <laughs> loot is loot still around that that was the little paper wasn't it yeah um james says shopify um, Shopify, it's a really yes, good point. Yeah. We, should we talk about and that? J J A T or Jat says your own um, website. Your own website. So well, that has, into that. That's come up a lot in the comments. Um, people just saying things like, uh, I dumped eBay and set up my own website. Why aren't you doing that? Why are you moaning about eBay and all this? We have had a reselling website. Um, we actually had one way back when we had a high street store. We spent a lot of money. It was expensive back then. I'm talking 15 years ago. Um, and for us then, it wasn't worth the time and money to compared to what we were doing on eBay still back then mm. and Amazon. We had one, we worked with Wix to help promote Wix and we set up a, a retail website yeah. and that didn't work for us. The Maybe point, it was us. The point that you made though is because we're such generalist sellers, if we had a niche, um, or if we were just selling, you know, like vintage and antique homewares or, you know, something like that, then it might work. But when you, you're selling then yeah. everything and, you know, board games and toys and, you know, ev everything that we sell. Car parts, uh, yeah. anything. <laughs> it's like, how do you market that? And how do you find a market for it? That's um, And that is why eBay is the always has been the perfect fit for us. Mm. Um, and I, I hear what you're saying, and I'm not arguing that your own website is an option. And for some people, it's exactly the right option. Yeah, maybe, maybe people who, like Ed, I was going to yeah. mention Edward. We, our friend Edward, who is an antique dealer in Wales. Well, you might know him as Walter. <laughs> uh, he had set up his own website two or three years back now, and he's doing very well out of it. And barely touches eBay, I think, now. I think he uses it a bit. So he is a success story for that. He put so much work into it and fair play to him. Um, maybe that was what was lacking with us or maybe it's a lack of knowledge around SEO and all of that side of it, which you really need to be on top of. 
Um, but again, I would rather sell on eBay because it works. And as a selling platform, if we just talk about the nuts and bolts of it as a selling platform, fantastic. If we're talking about eBay's customer service, appalling. For me, it's black and white. Love the website, love how it works. There's, there's things I would change. It's never going to be perfect, but it's brilliant. Customer service and everything surrounding that site. I don't know why that's over you there. But, um, genuinely appalling. I can't think of a better word for eBay's customer service. Um, yeah. Uh, Chris Tyler says, I'd love to run a secondhand shop. And yeah, that would be really cool. You know, I've if, romantically, I would love to have a, a a secondhand record shop. I've always wanted to do that. We kind of did it, but really um, the media um, in terms of gaming and all of that kind of stuff was our bread and butter. That was what sold better for us. And um, so we concentrated more on that, although we did still <laughs> sell music, but we never really had a, a record shop. And I've always wanted a record shop. Well, romantically, but in terms of financially, I don't think it would be the best thing to do. Um, Vin my... Vinyl, um, we came out of High Street just as vinyl surged again. Yeah. And we, we ran our shop from early 2000s until about 20, 2009, was it? No, 2011, 2011. 2011. Um, we both love vinyl. That We're kids of the 80s, right? So we were into all of that. And I would have loved to have a, had a record store, but financially it didn't make sense at the time. It's kind of a shame. Um, yeah. uh, Manos Market says, let's be honest, nobody comes close to eBay, really. That's kind of my opinion. Um, and there's so much talk about alternatives, and that's what we're trying to talk about tonight. Oh, we've got a... But Super yeah, chat, which I, I didn't notice. I don't think it's there yet. And and don't get me wrong, I think we will revisit Vinted. We are hopefully going to get onto whatnot, have a mess around with whatnot. I think if you don't try things, then you, you can't really comment on them, right? You can't have a genuine opinion if you don't try it for yourself. So we will try these things. Um, but I don't see it yet. I don't see anything that it comes close to rivaling eBay. Apart from Amazon, and we ditched them. <laughs> um, thank you so much for the super chat. Is that um, how do you pronounce that? Av, Av, Avdam, Avdamali. Av, Avdamali, maybe. Maybe. Um, sorry if I, if I said that wrong. Um, after seeing that you had a case where you could lose your account, now I changed my mind, and no way I can commit my family income solely on eBay. <coughs> Um, we have in our discussions, um, there was no point apparently during this where they were looking at switching us off. We did have a deadline, but we were told, no, no, that they were going to maybe restrict our account further if we couldn't meet the deadline. But then it would have been escalated and they weren't looking to switch us off. And we were told time after time how valuable our, you know, we were to them and all of this. But it doesn't take away how vulnerable we felt, especially when you hear the stories, right, of computer says no, off. We were watching a lady in America who had her account switched off. And when she finally got answers, it was because she didn't answer her, answer a call from customer yeah. service three times. One call. No, one is one call. I still find that hard to believe. But why would she be lying? Why would she be making that sort of stuff up? Shocking. Yeah. Um, Salamander says eBay is the best platform, but they have a bad attitude towards the seller. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, Joni says Etsy. Yeah, I mean, there is that. Yeah, I, I think, you know, if, if I didn't have any other outlet, then I would look into doing things like that, having another cabinet or a booth or, you know, even a bricks and mortar or, you know, selling at markets, that sort of thing. Somebody um, said to us, go and, go and sell face-to-face -face um, on markets and boot sales or just sell your stuff at boot sales. It just wouldn't work for what we do. For example, I've just sold tonight... Um, some little Lavazza Wimbledon cups, and I sold it for eighty pounds. I think I could go to a boot sale every weekend for the rest of my life and not sell that for eighty pounds. Yeah. 
It's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, I know. We went to a boot South Day. It was an indoor one. And I would say 50% of people there were, you know, dealers, business sellers. Um, and, yes, well, so which a lot shows of the prices. The... You know, I, I bought some studio pottery on one stall. It was 50p. I uh, bought some on another stall. It was a pound. I went to another stall. Ten pounds for that, please. <laughs> like, why am I going to buy some nice studio pottery for £10, even if I'm a collector, when I can, you know, go to other stalls and, and buy, you know, sort of nice pieces as well for 50p and a pound. Um, the point is, we've kind of undermined my my little argument then, because we all see them. We all see the dealers week in, week out at the car boot sales. So they are selling the stuff. I don't think they're getting the top of what they might get online, no. but they're getting a quick, maybe no, they're not. quicker turnaround, maybe, or their overheads are less. They're not having to package it. So maybe that is a viable thing. What I'm saying is you won't get the prices that we are used to getting mm. on eBay. Um so honestly, HLF says, honestly, your own website is really the only thing you ever have full control of. It requires marketing there. Yeah, it does. That's it. Yeah. And what you pay for and use with eBay is a ready-made marketplace and ready-made marketing. And yeah. Other industries encourage user groups to get together to give feedback and ideas. Do eBay offer anything like this? It would show that they are willing to listen to their customers. Um, there's like chat within eBay. Yeah, I think there are. There are community um, groups. On yeah, there, I think. Yeah, but it does. In our experience, it feels like they're not hearing the right things, or they're not listening and actually taking in the right stuff. Um, and the point we made to them was: this is a very good point. So many people sure. are leaving the platform once they've left. They can't get any of that feedback because they, they. I think you said it so well. They leave quietly. They, they go, I'm done with this. Account closed, off. Mm. Probably people in the chat that have done exactly that. You're not feeding back what happened to eBay. And why should you, right? You're gone. Uh, who cares? So they're not finding out what went wrong. Yeah. But this is a really good point from Michelle Etsy, but it has its own issues. No platform is perfect. And that is the good point. No platform is perfect. So you can jump around all you like, but you're just going to end up probably... Jump around. <laughs> what, like an angry child? <laughs> no, talking about from platform to platform. You, you're going to have issues with whatever platform because mm. nothing is perfect. Um, but then this point also yeah. is valid. It, it yeah. shouldn't be an issue if the support was there. 100%. To verify our business details should have been a simple procedure. And they've admitted this. They completely dropped the ball on a tiny, you know, verifying your business. Let's say they have to eventually verify all businesses on there. How many times is this happening? Week in, week out. Lots. We hear about it. Lots and lots. It's just mind numbing. It's ridiculous. Um, Tamara uses mainstream auction houses, eBay, and Facebook. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did you want to pick out any more? Yeah. Or oh, someone there saying, get a charity shop and take your percentage. Um, I don't know. If you set up a charity, you, you would, as the person running it, take a wage. Mm. Um, I, I doubt that would be done on a percentage. I don't know how you would could set it up. Um, we have we feel like we've done our time in retail, so I can't see us going back. Um, but I, I still love the thought of bricks and mortar. I still miss our our retail outlet. I miss the buzz of it. I miss people bringing stock to me through the door day in day out. Boxes full of games coming in. Um, <laughs> And even that had its downside. Dealing directly with the public, buying and selling for cash, 
is a stressful occupation, yeah. believe you me. Yeah, nine, nine out of 10 times, it, it, you have lovely customers. Yeah. But you also deal with people who are shouting at you and- <laughs> And threatening your life. Yes. Right, smashing the windows. Oh, breaking um, in, yeah, smashing windows just for fun, just yeah. for fun. We'll come in on a Monday morning and, you know, Nothing that people have been out on a Friday, Saturday night and decided, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I'm just gonna put my hand through your window. <laughs> uh, did you highlight Derek? Sir? Yeah, I did. Uh, a quarter of my business is now Etsy. Excellent. In addition to eBay, it's a safety net that will pay the bills during some eBay problem like you had is sorted. Or if I stop eBay completely, I could ramp it up. Exactly. And I think um, we've watched a couple of people talking about this. Shelley was talking about it on her live, for example. And like I said, we're not naive and we, we do a similar thing. And we've spent 10 years building up this very channel. And the irony of eBay's latest problem is we've, we've done better on YouTube than on eBay for the last week financially because we've spent the effort building up this as a resource. Um, we can focus more on YouTube than eBay if we needed to, um, but there's not much of a channel if we're not reselling, put it that way. And we are, again, we are so far off YouTube being our income, but it, but it is something we've actively been pursuing, right? And built it up. Um, but yes, I, I think coming out of this, we both feel that we need to do more on Etsy. Yeah. Um, we are probably going to look at Vinted. You used to sell on Vinted, didn't you? Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to the seeing what happens with Vinted Pro. Vinted um, Pro. And, you know, if we get the chance to be able to sell on whatnot, then I think we would. Yeah. We'd give it a go, certainly. I think um, we'd all be daft not to at least try the alternatives yeah. if you if you don't know until you try it all right um is it oh, okay or ook, ook. <laughs> i love ebay you can sell anything and i think the the important point there is you can sell anything because yeah etsy is good but you have to either sell handmade or vintage um so that doesn't work for our entire business because we sell a lot of modern stuff as well yes so yeah um Hello, who was that saying hi from oh, sorry. South Dakota? Hello, Todd. Good to see you. Thanks for popping in. Um, hello, Carla. Diversifying if you're in Europe is not very easy. Like in the US, Etsy takes a long time to sell items and Vinted doesn't have enough buyers. Yeah. It's kind of how we feel that there isn't yet an option that's as good as eBay, yeah. in our opinion. Yeah. Uh, Once Love Treasure says, it's all too easy to give up and walk away, but then what? Yes, eBay needs to sort itself out, but it's not bad all of the time. And when it's working, it's good. But when things go bad, it can be a nightmare. Yeah. Yes, you put that very succinctly, 100% agree with you on that one. Yeah, at, at the same time, we, we, we've said in these conversations that many people would have walked during that experience or during some of the other experiences we've had dealing with eBay's ridiculous customer service. And we know people that have walked and we've read the stories of people that have walked for stuff like this. So they need to, if they genuinely care about us, as they keep telling us they do, they need to put time and resources into fixing this stuff. Because I don't think a lot of it needs much more than clear, concise, communication yeah that's I, what i said that's that's the key word here communication <laughs> we've we've already said to them is it too much to ask to have a uk-based call center we haven't had an answer to that and we know it all comes down to money um but yes there's so many conversations to have and hopefully we will get to have them as we as we carry on this ongoing conversation yeah. So Liam makes a good point. Etsy are getting a lot of bad press. We holding on to sellers' money for four to five days, so they are losing sellers. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Nobody's perfect. Uh, Dig Vintage saying it's a slower sell through, yeah. but prices are higher. That's our yeah. experience. Yeah, it is. Hmm. 
Uh, Dina Cox is saying, I've just joined in. Did you have the call from the promised senior manager yet? I know you spoke to senior customer service. Yeah, we had a, a very interesting conversation with the, the brand new starting tomorrow. Um, I keep forgetting, what is the general manager of eBay UK? Maurizio, I think, yeah, the exactly. Italian chap. Um, we are going to do a follow up on that because there's a lot to share. Yeah. Uh, flipping out, I've said, I opened an Etsy store when eBay was dead about two years ago. It's nowhere near as good. The customer service is terrible. No number or email. I got scammed on there a month ago and no reply from Etsy. Yeah, so there you go. Well, there's a ringing endorsement for Etsy's customer service. What do you think to OnVibe? I, I personally have not even heard of it. Um. No. Stephen says, from my experience, Etsy has worse customer service than eBay. Wow. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah. And Andrew here says, don't feel 100% safe with any platform. Amazon did the same to me and many other sellers just after Xmas. Um, cut off funds and no customer service, just not good enough. Well, we've been through this with Amazon as well. Yeah. <sighs> When I was doing big numbers on Amazon, um, I used to, for three or four years, I used to save up stuff throughout the year and then really push Amazon FBA in the in Q4. And then one year, at the beginning of, at the end of November or the beginning of December, we had a, a similar thing to eBay. It was all about verifying our business. And the whole company partnership issue came up and we lost thousands in revenue because they 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 switched our store off um it, it was it was just the worst timing they could have picked and they wouldn't listen to us they wouldn't accept our, it was so it was strikingly similar to what happened it was the other really week. similar but we we did get a letter from hmrc and they accepted that <laughs> we got a letter from hmrc and ebay didn't accept that no. so um benny says no platform is without issue it's how the platform responds to them that matters. There you go. Yes. And, and that's what we feel we might be able to help with opening their eyes to that simple statement. Yeah. That if they spent money and time and effort making their communication with us when there's a problem, because we've said to them, if it's, I don't know, a little issue like a feedback thing or, or something, nuts and bolts, that, that isn't a let's switch all your, all your income off kind of problem. If it, uh, not some, you know, a little problem can be dealt with by outsourcing the customer service possibly. But when it's a serious issue, serious enough to stop your income, is it too much to have a UK-based team that can liaise with us one-on-one? -on -one? Is that too much to ask? Because I said directly to this chap on Friday, Maurizio, I said, the problem was serious enough to stop our income, and this is still, eBay is still our main income, yet it wasn't serious enough for somebody to, for us to have somebody dedicated to the problem and to have somebody in the, in England ideally, but Ireland even, to dedicate to it. We spoke to a different person every time and we felt like nobody was actually dealing with a problem that was that serious, switch off the money. And we were like, what? Why? Anyway. Um, Tony and Jill say there's no alternative, unfortunately. Tamara Hello. says, I'll never use Etsy after their recent trick of putting people's money on hold for many months. Makers have gone bankrupt. And we have a family member who is a maker as well. And uh, she's done exactly the same thing, just removed all her business from Etsy. Um, Hello, Master of Pieces. Hello. Yeah, I've been watching your content recently. Really interesting. Great videos. <clears throat> yeah, Dave talking about um, oh, High Street. We know all too well. High Street shops, high street shops nearly open, nearly open, but you need huge footfall and not pay business rates and rent. Yeah. Well, and that... then you only have a local market, whereas what you have with eBay is an international market. You know, not just one town. Well, when we were doing retail and doing really well out of retail, we weren't just doing retail either. We were doing 
retail as in high street retail but we were it was mostly amazon then because it was quick and easy i was scanning oops, scanning media <laughs> into amazon and we would say we would you know be working all day in the shop and every day i was carrying sacks of mail over to the sorting office and that was our business model for years and years and it, and it worked um but yeah, retail is tough. Retail is so tough. It, but if you get it right, you can make a fortune. And and our shop, thank goodness, did well financially. Um, and eventually we moved on and came out of retail. But yeah, it's so much work, so much time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we worked six days a week. For a long time, I was often working seven days a week because I'd go out sourcing on Sunday. Oh, well that, yeah. Sorry, I, when we were including sourcing, we worked <laughs> yeah. seven days a week. So, some weeks I'd work Monday to Saturday. Because <laughs> we were doing the online thing too, so we sourced for eBay. Yeah, Monday to Saturday, and then I'd get up sometimes 6 a.m. on a Sunday and go and do three or four boot sales. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ian says, I, I sell mainly musical instrument stuff. I'm using Amazon, Reverb and eBay, but eBay is my biggest market. Interesting. Um, Stu is an advocate of Etsy. El Reventa. Hi, we met at the um, yes. meetup. Hello. Um, eBay is king. I sell on Vintage, Depop, Bestiaire and whatnot. Um, nothing has the reach for, for everything but eBay. Some people are smashing what not but most aren't making much or making a loss at the moment yeah yeah the i think most people know my opinion on what not but I, i'll share i bear in mind we haven't used what not yet so the opinion may change but it feels like it's a bit of a bubble i know there's i don't know there's a split divide in the community as to whether what not is a viable opportunity or not we know chris does very well uh who is, else is doing well on there uh, George is enjoying it, Luxury Pickers, and others have found it almost a waste of time and effort. Yeah, at the moment, because it still needs to grow. Yeah. But if you've got the social media following and you can leverage that, I think that at the moment is the difference. Yeah. Um, Tommy Trade says, I've been doing one stream a week on whatnot as a sort of bonus, but no way I could sell on there. Um, Only so on there. Uh, sorry. Uh, the type of items can determine the platform we have to you we have to use to sell to sell them it seems mm. yes and yeah good point from fluffy muffin bricks and mortar shops cost so much money and battles with landlords and local councils yes um, we yeah. were paying more in rates than we were rent on our the, second shop it was ridiculous i can't remember the numbers we we were handing over yearly to have a high street shop and we had a central location in Hitchin quite a big <laughs> floor quite a big shop with a huge basement and our rent and rates was, was it was eye-watering that the money we were spending yeah I like this comment don't go back to work sod that <laughs> well yeah yeah 29th seller says my alternative is either back to work back to a 95 or selling on a local Sunday market. Yeah. Could you afford to live without eBay? No. Not without replacing <laughs> it with something. This is kind of what we're talking about. No. If, if we had to find an alternative, if we wanted to carry on doing business as we do now, buying a range of secondhand things, selling them for profit, is there a viable online alternative? I think the answer currently is no. I mean, maybe there is. Maybe it's do a bit of all of it. Yeah. If eBay, if eBay, maybe that's it. That's the answer. Isn't viable. Yeah. I know. Um, yeah. Um, Dizzy says, lost my eBay account over a similar issue you had. Was selling with eBay for almost five years. I stick with Vinted and Depop for reselling. I still like using eBay to buy items and do market research. Wow. Hmm. Yep. Uh, what happened to the Airbnb idea? Still in the works. It's always been um, a longer term thing. Um, we we will update you when we know more concrete things. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it, it relies on money. It's so, yeah, basically. It, so. It's kind of up in the air, but it's not. Um, I wish I could share more now. 
it's still the idea. It's still it's something we both feel quite passionate about wanting to do, but it's it's going to be a huge investment one way or the other. Yeah. So, um, and it's always been a long term plan. We we've always been thinking two or three years ahead. Um, if we know something concrete, we'll let you know. <laughs> Um, Tracy says, I sell on Macari as well as eBay. I really like selling on Macari. Their fees are about half of eBay fees and the buyer has to rate your item before you get paid. But I think it works for sellers. Unfortunately, Macari um, left the UK. They, they're not in the UK anymore. I did start selling on Macari when they launched in the UK and then they, they stopped. <laughs> so, yeah. I think what Macari and... Um... Poshmark, wasn't it? Yeah. I think that shows that the market, the landscape in the UK is so different to the mm. US. Uh, I can't put my finger on why, I, but it is very different. And, and those companies clearly struggled to make it work over here. Whatnot is now giving it a go. I think unanimously people think they need to start marketing to the wider public and, and, and quit, you know advertise it wider and get a, a bigger customer base in there but it remains to be seen if whatnot can make it work um it's interesting uh top of the pops redub to like your name <laughs> said i primarily sell media cd these books dvds and therefore ebay is really the only way to go clothing sellers are spoilt for spoilt for choice oh sorry <laughs> i was don't, just don't close us down i was just closing that <laughs> Facebook ones, doing? it was dinging at me. Um, spoil, are you, sorry, we, we all disappeared. Um, <laughs> spoiled for choice in this respect um, with whatnot, vintage, Etsy, etc. Yes. Yeah, I agree. Uh, oh, hi, Richard. What's Richard saying? Can I read that? Yeah. For the wide range of products I sell, there are no viable alternatives. That's kind of what I've been saying. I agree. Etsy for possibly some things, but would take a long time to build any sort of level. Uh, that was anywhere near my eBay income. Yeah, I mean, we I think we run very similar businesses, don't we, Richard? And it's why the, the recent experience was, was a real kind of shock because we suddenly felt vulnerable. And we have been here before and we felt vulnerable before. And that's what this conversation is about. What would we do? Could we carry on as we are with other platforms? And I, I don't feel like I could without eBay. Um, it's a worry. Okay. Um, is that the one we just read? Yeah. I think your app would be killer if you advertise it right. Well, we hope so. Um, yeah. We we are <laughs> we hope so. we're we're in the horrible kind of close to the finish development hell point, mm -hmm. right? Where everything is so frustratingly near launch, and then it's a, then it Thank you know. The, the, the grind to get it. everything finished is is painful, um, but yes, uh, it's it's a work in progress. Okay, um, hey Phil, Nick, I bet you would quite like my job: opening and closing Argos stores, lots of skews and racking stock. Your head, I, I would genuinely enjoy that. Um, if you if you sliced me in half, you'd find a, a retailer, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And although I've said tonight we wouldn't go back to retail, I miss retail. I still miss. We do. I mean, that's how we that. met in retail. <laughs> um, but we get so much satisfaction about, well, through um, the freedom we have now. Mm. Yeah. So going back to being stood in a shop nine to five, mm. I don't know. I can do it. I'm an old man now. <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Um, RH Tube says, as someone already said, how about online auction here on YouTube? There's 600 plus on here now. So you do one now. Well, well, not one now. But it does lead nicely into how does everybody feel about having another sale next week? Shall we do that? Shall we have another first dip sale? Sure. <laughs> it's a great point. And we have experimented with that. We've done five or six now. Um, we've... We've not used that as thinking about a viable alternative or a way to really make money. It's more kind of been a fun thing to do. And, but it could be, right? We could pursue that. 
uh, more seriously, and maybe we will. Um, well, we're going to think yeah. about wrapping this up. I'm going to zoom to the bottom and really apologise for missing people's comments, but it is, what, 10 past nine now. Um, yeah, sorry if we missed your comments. We've just gone to the bottom of the chat. What's Stephen saying? I'm so dyslexic. I thought you were saying hi to yourself, Lainey. Oh, he's trying to Lainey. <laughs> oh, hi, Leanne. <laughs> okay, that's funny. What was that? It was just it was a question. We may have missed some questions, um, but what's that? Uh, hello, Seaweed Coins. What is your best suggestion as what to use as a way to receive payment online? Is PayPal a good option? Yeah, yes. we use PayPal or bank transfer. So, yeah, that's about it, really. PayPal are, are a trusted organisation. You, yeah. you can't really knock them. Yeah. Um, although we've had run-ins with PayPal <laughs> yeah, as well. The same one, funnily enough. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Um, we we normally oh Cliff is in. I don't know if you were here at the beginning. We were sharing Mini Jeff. Thank you, thank you again so much for sending that over. It really genuinely did make us laugh. Oh, Jake wants to know what is Jeff's favourite food or toys. Um, he doesn't. He's got a box full of toys that he barely ever plays with unless he's mm. in the mood for it. He's a bit funny like that. I think don't think he was sort of raised to play that way. So no. um, he loves his food. Um, what does he like? He likes chewy things. He loves dentist sticks and like the sort of Cliff off, uh, sent him before those sort of, um, what are they, like the little tube chewy things. Yeah, chewy sticks, yeah. that sort of thing. Um, That's what he likes. He's got some um, friend mail of his own recently, so we need to need to treat him because <laughs> the two very kindly kind people have sent us some stuff to um, buy Jeff treats with. Yes. Um, okay, let's quickly read a couple of comments and then we'll, we will wrap up in our usual way. Uh, hello, Thomas. I hope you're keeping well, mate. Uh, hi there. Really enjoyed watching tonight. Thank you. It's been a tough week. If losing my uncle wasn't bad enough on Tuesday, we had to have the dog put down. Oh, my goodness. He was 16, but it's still heartbreaking. Of course it is. They become so much part of your life. If you if you were watching many years ago when we lost Monty, I was a wreck. I was a wreck for a long time after well, that. It's just such, well, they're like, <laughs> like children, really. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. Oh, look, a new seller platform in the US called District. Whether any of these will ever become a serious rival to eBay, it still remains to be seen. I, I mentioned this to you earlier. Whenever um, episodes like this happen, like our account restriction or whatever, people say eBay's done for, eBay's doomed, eBay's this and that. They've been saying that all the time I've been on YouTube. People have been telling me eBay's a dinosaur. It's 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 dying. They're not, I don't think. Uh, they need to sort their customer service operation out, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, before we go into words of wisdom, can we just have a show of hands of um, interest in having a first dip sale next week? If people put their hands up, we're not going to see this. No, they can put their hand up in the, in the chat. <laughs> there are emojis for that, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, um, how about others selling on your specific channel for a fee? Blimey, we've never thought about that. Mm. Right. Oh, look, we've got a super chat. Sorry, Major Win. A little bit of gratitude, is that what Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We do appreciate, much appreciate it. it. Uh, people are saying yes and thumbs up. Um, we did go sourcing on Saturday so you could do like you say a similar first dib so I could put some stuff in it as well if you like mix it up yeah oh lots of hands <laughs> virtual hand up yeah okay well did you say you want to do it next week yeah I was thinking next week we'll probably do a, a preview during the week at some point yeah I haven't shared the stuff I picked up at the last couple of jumble sales and the last charity warehouse store so i might do some more sort of sit here and share stuff and show you values on screen i've been talking about doing that so uh, i may do that instead i miss yahoo auctions wow they were more like a real auction 
Yes, if a bid came in the last few minutes, it extended the auction auction time. I used to find those quite frustrating, I'll be honest. <laughs> so we normally leave these um, Sunday streams with words of wisdom. Um, we, we try and leave on a positive, particularly tonight, because apparently we've been moaning too much. Um, so if you've got any words of wisdom, uh, please pop them in. We'll read a bunch out and we'll leave you with our favourite. I think you should pick one this evening. OK, um, you can relate um, it to eBay. You can relate it to having all your eggs in one basket or finding alternatives. Any of that. Just what quickly, uh, I want to just say thank you to BCP for sharing my channel link. Um, if, you, if you are new here and you don't know that I have a channel as well, but it's kind of both our channel because we're, <laughs> we're both on it. <laughs> well, that, that's really your channel. You, well, yeah, you produce know, all of that. I put out vlogs, so it's really an extension of this channel. Um, so, yeah, um, go and check it out and please subscribe if you would like to. So, words of wisdom, Elaine. Um, there are two places you need to go to often, the place that heals you and the place that inspires you. Fine. I can get behind that. Yeah. yeah. Sharon says, sometimes the scars on the inside take longer to heal than the ones on the, oh, on the outside. <laughs> Whoa. That, yeah. I, I, yeah. I love yeah, it when I, hear you, I love it when I these hear, words of wisdom. I hear you. <laughs> do you ever get that tingling down the back of your neck from reading some of these? That that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I just can I just say I did share on Instagram. Anyone who was watching the Brits, did you get an incredible emotional response to Ray's performance? That was amazing. Yeah, it was absolutely absolutely incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. Um, Major Inn says, if you place a low value on yourself, the world won't raise your price. Oof, yeah. That's good. That is, yeah. yeah, that's deep. Chris G, a man is as old as the woman he feels, depending, depending how you read it. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't gain a whole lot because Andrew's only a year younger than me. <laughs> don't go running off now. <laughs> Hello, Ali. Um, don't underestimate the power of clear communication is the key to a settled mind and happy life. Wow. Now, and, that, that is spot on for what we're talking about, isn't yes, it? Yes. And you Absolutely. could add to that, Ali, and the key to eBay running a successful <laughs> platform. And, and this is, again, this is what we're trying to banging on to anyone that will listen to us at eBay. Sort your communication out. Because yeah. it's sometimes as simple as that, telling us what the problem is and how to solve it, or us telling them, you know, there's no clear lines of communication. There wasn't in our recent ordeal anyway. Yeah. Um, Ian says, in the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. Yes. That's what we were yes. saying earlier. We're trying very hard to turn this whole thing into a positive. Yeah. Belinda, I suggested a one-page website where you can add links to eBay just to see how much the traffic, how much traffic the website gets. Hmm. Okay. I'm not sure I understand that completely. No. But okay. Okay. Um, right. James says, um, people would rather hear comforting lies than harsh truths. That, yeah, that is really true. Actually. Well, we both said going into the conversation yeah. we had on the, on Friday with eBay UK's general manager, all we wanted, all we hoped for that was somebody who was open to listening, <laughs> actually hearing what we had to say. And yeah, we we are still hopeful he took it in, and we we hope he did. We hope he did. It was it was an interesting one. Really we we try to be optimistic. Um, hello, Maggie. Um, says when eBay's good, it's very, very good, but when it's bad, it's awful. What's that from? Yeah, what is that from? But I know it's like a it's from a nursery rhyme, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, uh, Porkies, hello. Never let anyone rent a space in your head unless they are a good tenant. Oh, I like that. Yeah, um. People talking about scammers on Etsy there. 
Darren, don't stop moaning. <laughs> don't stop moaning. <laughs> is that is that that's an S Club Seven hit, isn't it? <laughs> don't stop moaning. <laughs> da, da, da. Sure, or, or flute with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Are we done? With, oh, Lainey, is it? Hey, Lainey. Uh, consider the postage stamp. Its usefulness consists in its ability to stick to one thing till it gets there. Oh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Interesting. Lainey's good at these. I like that. I've never heard that. But it's good. Tamara says, be the change you wish to see. That's one of my very favourite sayings. Yes. That really and is. that relates so much to... to not so much being the change, but try your hardest to to make change happen. And we've been given a tiny little opportunity here because eBay are reaching out to us to talk at the highest level. So we would be stupid not to grab that opportunity. And I started tonight by saying so many cynical comments on those videos about we're wasting our time. eBay are dead. eBay are useless. I just dropped them. And we're like, well, no, we're going to try and make things better. Maybe we're naive and daft, but hey ho, we'll give it a go. Oh, that won't. <laughs> uh, flip it, ship it says, when it rains, look for rainbows. When it's dark, look for stars. Yes. Are oh, there any more? Yes, Cliff's got, got one. If you make someone happy, they may tell you. They may tell. A couple, a of, couple people. of people. If you upset someone, they tell a lot more people. That is very true. We said a similar thing to eBay. Yeah. Bad news travels fast, especially yeah. now in this. We're in the social media age, and when they screw up, everybody hears about it. You know, yeah. we don't share when an eBay sale goes really well, do we? Or when eBay customer service actually does something right. That you know. Uh, Paul Rose, in 100 years, who's going to care? It's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. They'll be going, what's eBay? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, Chris Tyler says, Andrea isn't stern unless you're sat to the right of her. Am I stern? You have your moments. I have my moments, but only, well, I'm not stern like all the time. I'm not a stern. But then person. I have my moments when I wind her up beyond belief, so it's understandable. <laughs> Okay, do you want to pick um, a favourite? Joe we... is there. True character is revealed in moments of extreme anger. Wow, Ooh. yeah. And Ian says, it's not personal when eBay mess you around. It's just business. Yeah, maybe it's not personal. But if they want to run a business, they need to treat us with some, I don't know, well, a better level, level of customer well, service. That's all we want. It certainly affects us personally mm. let's put it that way um san amanda don't let the mm -mm grind you down what's that bookends <laughs> um thomas live life to the full you never know what's around the corner yeah um silver hair stacker hello ebay sales paid for my wife's pacemaker surgery well there you are i think i will stay with it wow very very good point well put um wow. Neil says generally life is good. Yes. That's a positive. Yes, I like that. This this is why we end on your comments because it lifts the, the, the grass is always greener. It is indeed. Well, another good point. Right, do you want to pick one of these then? Oh, I just wanted to get to the bottom. Your most unhappy customers are your greatest chance of learning. Yes. Uh power to the little peeps. <laughs> Oh, here we are. I click on the like button, cost nothing. <laughs> there we go. Um, yes, I think I know which one I'm going to choose. It's up here somewhere. Um, if I could find it. Here we are, Ian's. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. I like that one. I think it's very apt. <clears throat> yes, with that in mind, I, I don't know when we're going to put something together to share with you um, what... Maurizio, I always feel like I'm saying his name wrong. I think I think that's right. Um, some of what he had to say and some of what he has, um, his responses to the many questions we asked. Uh, but we will try and put it together next week. We've got quite a busy week. We've got a lot to get through. Um, but we'll try and put that together and, and share it with you because that's the whole point really is to share what eBay say with the wider community. 
Right. Thank you for joining with us. Thanks for all your words of wisdom and for being here for the last hour and 24 minutes. Wow, we've gone over. Yeah, thank you for sticking with us. We still have 466 of you here. Well done for reaching this far, you crazy people. Um, I will put something together tomorrow, put a video out either tomorrow or Tuesday. Um, there are videos on Andrea's channel, which was shared earlier. There so. is a vlog of us going out charity shopping uh, featuring Ellen and Jeff. <laughs> and this week I'm going to do a haul. Hmm. So there should be a haul up on Tuesday. Um, we are now talking about doing another little sale next week, this very time slot, eight till nine-ish. Um, so we will try and remember to put out a preview of the items we'll be selling at some point during the week. Wow, we do have a busy week. We do. <laughs> um, enjoy the rest of your Sunday, what little is left of it. Uh, hope next week is productive and the uh, kachings keep coming. We'll see you next week. Are we done? I think we are, yeah. Have a great week, everybody. Sure.